Turning now to the world stage, where some big challenges face the Trump administration right in its early days, including the deteriorating situation in Syria, Russia's growing influence in the Middle East, and the continuing threat from Islamic terrorism. Retired four-star Army General Jack Keane is the chair of the Institute for the Study of War and a Fox News military analyst. Uh, General, first of all, let's look at the big picture. What are, what are the main challenges that the new president faces? Listen, uh, the global security challenges that, that President-elect Trump is facing, we haven't seen the scale of these challenges, I don't believe, since the end of World War II with the rise of the Soviet Union. We've got radical Islam, ISIS certainly part of that, Al-Qaeda part of that, morphing into a global jihad. No strategy, no global alliance to deal with it. We've got three revisionist powers, Russia. Iran, China, all seeking some form of regional domination and all having some success. Cyber espionage and cyber attack is exploding from our adversaries inside of our country and we're not, we don't seem capable of, of stopping it. What makes these challenges so serious, in my judgment, David, because we've had challenges before, is that we're failing so miserably at it and as hmm. a result of it, you know, our friends have lost faith in us, they don't trust us, they don't think we're reliable, and our adversaries are downright emboldened. And what we need is strong leadership here. All right, well, you mentioned Islamic terrorism. That's a phrase that, that uh, President Obama wasn't even willing to say. At least now we have a president who's not afraid to say it. That's an improvement, isn't it? Oh, is it ever. We not only have to say it, we have to define it so the American people understand it. We have to explain it. We have to inform and educate so the American people are conversant with what this belief system is. They don't have to read any of the theology and philosophy behind it, but they, know how, they should know what the speech is, how people dress that are part of this, how people are acting, what their behavior is. So when they rise up in our communities, that there are friends and family members and co-workers that, that can identify it as such and do something about it. Now, the, the main focus of Islamic terrorism in the world is ISIS. And fighting ISIS, Donald Trump has said, is going to be his number one priority. How's the fight going? Are we winning or losing? Well, we're winning because we're taking territory back, and that's a good thing in Iraq principally. We do not have an effective plan to take the territory back in Syria. The president-elect will have to deal with that. But here's the, here's the other part of it. ISIS has expanded into 35 countries. We have no strategy and no alliances formed to deal with the reality of that. It doesn't mean that the United States has to be involved in all of that, but we certainly can help organize it and shape it, provide some resources, share intelligence. And we're not doing any of that. Now, Mosul is in Iraq. We're, we're going after them. It seems like kind of a tough slog. We're still fighting there. But what about, you mentioned Syria. Uh, the Russians, of course, are, are working with the Assad government, uh, which the United States says they want to get rid of, or at least President Obama did. Trump says he can work with Russia, with Russia to destroy ISIS. What do you think of that? Well, I think in dealing with Russia, we have to come at it in two ways. First of all, I think Putin took advantage of two presidents, President Bush and also President Obama, and had different levels of success with them. And certainly this president will be tested by Putin, to be sure. This is a guy that is using aggression and force in Georgia, in Crimea, in eastern Ukraine, and now in Syria to achieve his geopolitical goals put Russia back on the world stage, and he's also very interested in Eastern Europe and particularly the Baltic. So he is on the move. He has to understand clearly that the United States is not going to tolerate this kind of aggressive and assertive behavior at, at the expense of our interests and the expense of our allies. And we have got to lay that market down clearly for him. Rebuilding the military is something that Putin will pay attention to because capabilities make a difference. And if we have the intent to use the military only when needed, then that also becomes then therefore a credible deterrent. I don't believe that has been the case with President Obama. I, I think Putin believes that no matter what escalation Putin would do, that this, this country would not respond. And I think he's been inside uh, President Obama's head for some time. So but, but, Trump has a huge opportunity here to yeah. reset this thing to our favor, to our national interests. But I'm just wondering, can, can we work with Russia in going after ISIS and against Russia with their expanding interests in Eastern Europe? I have lots of concerns at working uh, with Russia going against ISIS until we have agreements 
in terms of what Russia's behavior is going to be. I, I think what Putin wants certainly is us to work with him against ISIS. He's not in Syria because of ISIS. He's in Syria for one reason only, to prop up the Assad regime, which he's been able to do successfully. And now, every single day, his bombers are bombing innocent people on the battlefield along with the Syrian bombers. To include his penetrating bombs have gone in and destroyed hospitals that are buried underneath the ground. He is committing war crimes. It's part of the overall mm. genocide campaign. We can't saddle up next to a guy like that and go after ISIS with him as a partner until his behavior changes. Interesting. General Keene, great to talk to you as always. Happy Thanksgiving, sir. Good to see you.